G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. As promised, we're going to be looking at the differences between the two ISOs that I downloaded for Debian 10.9, one being the free, one being the non-free. So we're gonna take a look at the differences. Um, there's pretty much only one we have to look at and I'll just show you what the other one, I've got a photo that I took on my phone. I'll show you um, what came up on the um, Wi-Fi or the internet um, indicator to, to see what was available and you might find that interesting and then we'll have a look at the inst we'll take a look at installing Debian 10.9 on my main system which last time I needed an Ethernet cable so this time we're going to see if we can install Debian using the non-free with no Ethernet cable and connecting to Wi-Fi let's check that out so here we are in the desktop of Debian 10 non-free. And if you have a look, we're on the live desktop right now and we have internet. With the free, with the Debian 10.9 free, which is the standard download, I did not have an option here for internet at all. And I've also tried a video test. See the sound is working, the video player is working. So everything seems to be working all right. The big question is, will it work after install? This is what we want to know. So I'm going to install this to a USB disk that I have connected to the system. And we will check that out because this could be a big game changer for people who have real big wireless problems. Because the last time I installed this on the NUC, this is my NUC Intel's, Intel Skull Canyon NUC. I could not get internet working. I had to connect via ethernet with a really long cable. So that was my issue last time. So I'm happy that it's working out of the box with the non-free download. So we'll go to manual partitioning. I do not want to touch either one of those ones. They're my main system. So here's my USB 150 gig hard drive there. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll make a FAT32 512 megabytes. Um, let's see. FAT32 boot EFI boot ESP. Okay. Then we'll make a um, 8 gigabyte swap partition. Linux swap. And that's all we need for that. And just for this video, I'll just make a whole primary partition there. And that will be mounted at root. We'll do that and OK. And then we'll click Next. And we'll go Next on that. And that's what it's going to install. And we'll install. So we'll see how we go with that. I'm, I'm pretty excited if this is running wireless after install that would be great i checked out the um the difference with the etsy apt sources.list file and for the non-free and the free they were both the same so there's no difference there all it's done is it's loaded it into um i think the bios the in the, the firmware so it's actually loaded it into the firmware to help the installer with all these device drivers. I believe that's what the non-free does. It's quite possible that we may not have wireless internet after this install. That's why I'm going through this. I'm hoping that's not the case because uh, it'll be nice to have the internet after install and uh, this may give a lot of people a good opportunity to um, download Debian and install it without messing about looking for these Intel drivers. Okay, so that is the install complete and I will reboot and we will find out whether we have these drivers after we uh, log into an installed desktop. So here we are in the desktop post install of Debian 10.9 non-free ISO and I'm happy to say that the internet was working out of the box I didn't even have to connect it. 
and was already connected, which is a completely different experience than what I had when I did my last install, which was probably more than um, 12 months ago, easy. I've been running Pop! OS for quite a while now. And this has really changed everything when it comes to installing Debian. So I've installed it on a USB, um, connected externally on the NUC, and all seems to be running well. Bluetooth is connected. Internet was connected straight off the bat. Sound is working fine. Everything's working as expected. So I think um, with the issues that I have with people asking me questions about getting Wi-Fi working for Debian, this is probably the best way to go if you want to install Debian and you're having issues with your devices, especially for install. So I haven't run Cinnamon for quite a long time, so I'm going to check out. They've got some GTK 3 and 4 themes here. That's very interesting, so I'm going to check them out. So there's the Quoga theme there. Let's check that out. So I quite like the Quoga Wind Dark. So I'm gonna in, I'm gonna download I'm gonna download that one. See what it looks like. So I'm going to have a look at the icon themes as well. We'll check those out. There's a Windows type one that I quite like. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I don't mind the Windows icons. I think it's this one here. Yeah, I think it's this one. So let's give that a go. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So we'll use, maybe the valley must be the normal one, so we'll try that. It's the file on top anyway, so it's got to be the normal one. <laughs> Let's just check out what we've got here. Um, downloads. So that's our icons. Cut that into home folder, display hidden files. Create a new folder. Dot icons that was a bit weird and then we'll um, create a new folder and call it dot themes it doesn't really highlight the folder does it that's really weird it looks like it's not even highlighted I tried to rename it when I did it to the icons that was real that's really strange let's cut that into dot themes and paste it there that's extract. Okay, and we'll go back to here. Dot icons. Extract here. I always make sure to look in the folder because you never know, like that, you see, you never know when there's more than one. So we've got to cut that back out into icons. Oh, and rename the main folder. Just put a one in front of it or something uh, because one of these is exactly the same name as that folder. So we'll cut that into icons, paste that, and that should be good to go. So let's see what we've got there. Go to themes, Quoker Wind Dark, icons. Um, let's use the dark one. And this one here, Quagle in Dark. So let's see how that looks. Oh, we don't appear to, oh. We appear to have lost our, let's reopen that, see if that's still working. So, uh, did I select the wrong one for that, did I? Themes, Quagle in Dark. It doesn't appear to be working correctly for that. Um, I think we need to change the controls as well, otherwise, I think that's what Cinnamon does now. If you change the window borders, you must change the controls the same as the window borders, otherwise it doesn't, there we go. So it's got to work hand in hand on that. So let's check that out. Okay. Show hidden files. So hide those files, so that all looks pretty good. And what about desktop background? Got some pictures here, some different ones. I've got quite a few there. Nothing that really does anything for me. Let's try that one. There we go, space fun. So yes, the themes seem to look okay. Firefox looks good. Menu looks good. 
Um, these ones are a little bit dark, but that's okay. And if we go to documents, go to home, these look good. I like the different colors on those. Not a bad one, this one. Have a look through the menu at all applications. Looks like most things have an icon. Users and groups is missing. Oh, it's just darkened. So that's meant to be the dark. Um, let's just try the light one, see if that's any better. Um, icons. Uh, try the normal one. See what that looks like. And they're light, but this one here is dark. <laughs> oh, you always get those slight discrepancies with icons, don't you? So what was the uh, users, users and groups, I think it was, that wasn't looking the best? Yeah, that's still dark anyway, that one. But these ones are a little bit more brighter. Not too bad. Just thought I'd try that theme out and see what it looked like. And uh, all looking good. So I've decided to try the Quoga theme and also Papyrus. Papyrus is a very popular icon set in Linux. So I thought I would give those a go. They're probably more feature complete than um, some of the other ones. So we'll try that. So I've got Quoga Dark. Let's try that one. So we've got nice colored system buttons here. That's all good. And we'll check out the applications. And I would suspect Quoga will work on most of them. Don't think it's been around anywhere near as long as Papyrus, but um, normally, in general, most things work with Quoga. And users and groups are the one I was having problems with last time. That's fine. And then we'll try Papyrus. So let's try that. Well, actually, we probably should try Papyrus Dark. So when you choose a dark when you choose a dark one, it means that it should be better with a dark uh, with a with a dark background. That's why it's called dark. Let's try that. So they're nice and coloured as well. I think they look a bit more outstanding than Quoga, to be honest. Let's just check that. Pretty complete, I must say. Yeah, I think Papyrus is probably the best one. Let's just check out the um, home folder. Yep, looks pretty good. And I don't think I checked out the home folder with the Quoga Dark. Let's do that. And that looks pretty good as well. I think the Papyrus is the best one out of them. So we'll stick with Papyrus Dark. So that's it for themes. Um, just thought I'd throw that in. Um, just show you how to change up the Cinnamon desktop to make it look a bit nicer. Um, I do want to try um, creating a new folder with this theme. So you can see that the title is highlighted. With the Add Waiter one, I couldn't see the highlight on the rename. That's why I was trying to rename because it wasn't, you couldn't see it at all. In this case, it's fine. That's not a problem at all. And that's it for the themes. And what we'll do is I'll log back into my Pop! OS and finish off the video. So there you have it. A simple Debian install with the right ISO, which is the non-free ISO. And you've got support for drivers, uh, hopefully for sound as well. Uh, so everything seemed to be working right for me. But most importantly, the Wi-Fi. During the live desktop and after the install as well. That's what worked for me. I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody, but it's definitely worked for me because I had, like I said and mentioned earlier in the video, I had huge problems with running an, a, a very long cable to get Ethernet to get Debian installed. So that's really great. So we're just going to have a quick look at these two here. These are the sources.list. 
Um, because one was a non-free, which is the one I've used to install, I figured that possibly they could have the non-free in the sources.list, but no, it's not the case. As you can see there, this one here is the free, and this one is the non-free. So the dark one is the non-free. They're very much the same. Nothing varies there. If we just check them out, they're exactly the same. So there's no difference there. The only difference is the non-free has the driver and the firm, firmware support. That's the difference. So I'm pretty happy with the results of this non-free ISO. I think that's just a great step in the right direction for helping people install uh, what I would probably consider one of the most popular distros um, within Linux, to be honest. And yes, Ubuntu is probably more popular, I would think, but I'm only judging on some of the, um, the views that I get on my videos. On some Ubuntu videos, there's a heap of views, and on some Debian ones as well, there's a heap of views. So they're pretty much, probably neck and neck, I would say. Probably Ubuntu is probably just a little bit in front. But I think there's a lot of people who like to run Debian because it cuts out the middleman. They can do what they want with Debian. And, you know, you now got snaps and flat packs that you can install as well. App images, all those things help now to run the most up-to-date apps. So that's, uh, a, you know, that changes everything as well. So you've got this non-free ISO, plus you've got all these options for installing the latest apps as well. And on top of that, you have a very stable kernel, so you don't get any updates that could uh, you know, mess around with the system because that stays pretty much a long-term support kernel until the next Debian comes out. So it's a very stable kernel indeed. So there you have it. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Don't know if I'm gonna install Debian again at the moment. I might be looking at trying a few other things. Um, got a couple other things in mind to look at. But uh, yeah, that's a great result. So anyway, if you're keen on Debian, but you didn't want to jump through the hoops and there's now an easier option, um, hopefully uh, this, ha this uh, non-free has most of the drivers that will cover the enormous amount of variations within uh, devices across the world. Hopefully it can support most of them. Um, I'll still, I'm still sure there's that small percentage that could have issues with drivers, I'm sure. There's no doubt about it. Uh, this is Linux. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found this interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.